What's up guys? This is Ben, aka Joyful Savage. I'm doing an update video because I'm doing a lot of reading here, but on this point, I want to do it on this book called Black Rednecks and White Liberals. I want to give you an insight to Mr. Thomas Sowell, who wrote this book, and about the real history of the United States and slavery. But and it's important during present times, especially with all the racial tension and all this other stuff. One of these things is one of the talking points of the day that America is systemically racist because we had it in the Constitution or they didn't get rid of it in the Constitution. And that's just not true. It's not entirely true because of the situation that was inherited by the settlers, by the war that they had just won to gain their freedom from Great Britain, who was controlling them, and largely the people in the North uh, didn't own slaves that much. Uh, it wasn't as big of a practice in the North as it was in the South. And a lot of people in the North wanted to get rid of it, but can you guess why they couldn't do it? They couldn't do it because in the South it was very common and had they done that, the South would have just broken off and started their own nation. So. Sure, maybe it wouldn't have been in the North, slavery wouldn't have been in the North in that country, but in the South, it would have continued and probably would have continued longer than 1863 when the Emancipation Proclamation come in. But instead of doing that, they chose to compromise and keep the solidarity of the Union versus jeopardizing the new nation to foreign invaders or whatever else. And I think it was a good call actually. Given that, there's further talking points on that, which like, you know, the three-fifths compromise where they talk about people want to use this as a talking point that, oh, America is racist again because they only counted slaves as three-fifths. But one thing was that it was like it was free versus slave. And, you know, there was actually some slaves that were white and different colors. And there was actually some free people who owned slaves that were black and other colors. So it's interesting. And... It doesn't mean that a black person is three-fifths of a white person. It just meant the representation in Congress was only counted for three-fifths. So it was a compromise between the North and the South. The South really getting the better end of the deal because had each slave been counted as one person, then the representation in Congress in the South for each state would have been much bigger. And guess who was in Congress in the South? White male slave owners. So it would have just given them more power to fight against slavery. So those are like two important things. The other important thing about the situation of the time was that it was just growing uh, in the Western Hemisphere. All other parts of the world, slavery was just a norm. They never even thought twice about it. They never even thought about it. It's just a fact of life. But in, in the Western Hemisphere, mostly due to religion and then enlightenment, or the Reformation and then the Enlightenment, there began to be a questioning of morality, whether slavery was right or wrong. And it was actually like the Quakers that had the first group that was really questioning it. Yeah, there was and, a growing movement, basically. Um, and in the North, you know, the, there was some abolitionists that were anti-slavery and they wanted to uh, just put an end to it immediately. But that also wasn't maybe a viable option given that the people, I'll call them social justice warriors of abolition in the, in the North, because they remind me of them. They wouldn't have had to dealt with the consequences of it happening, like the three million slaves being freed. Because the whites in the South, most of them didn't own slaves, they would have had to deal with it and they were afraid of a possible rebellion given that po other rebellions had happened and they didn't want to get into some war or some conflict, deal with other social consequences of slaves being set up and then freed. And also maybe just the war happening. So the Abraham Lincoln and the other people you know, leading the charge had to view the whole context of the field and make the best and most appropriate decisions. And it's important not to just do some anachronistic moral reasoning, which means using your present day knowledge and feeling morally superior to these people in these times because you would have done this in this situation given your 21st century view of the world. Uh, it's important not to do that because that's not realistic. And a lot of people will like look down at Abraham Lincoln because he said something in one speech or he didn't do this sooner. But, and then they'll look positively on someone that was just completely an abolitionist that was completely anti-slavery, but not taking into consideration and into account that 
the person who was just completely anti-slavery freed zero slaves and Abraham Lincoln freed like three and a half million slaves. So, yes, it was important to view that whole thing and how they were trying to work through a solution about what they could do because the international slave trading in the USA had been banned earlier. Lincoln even hung someone and killed him because he brought, tried to bring slaves over to actually Cuba, but they got caught and he killed them. And that was just like the policy that they had. But the um, actual institution of slavery had continued on just within the communities, mostly in the South. And Thomas Sowell, he makes a point to view the world and view slavery from a large context, not a narrow context. So if you view it from the narrow context, It'll just show you that white people are inherently evil and this is what happens. They're racist, blah, blah, blah. And but if you use it from the, the large perspective, be like, no, slavery was just a fact of life for thousands of years. One group always enslaved another group. It was happening on every single continent. And the real lesson in, and yeah, the real lesson being that whenever one group has too much power, unbridled power over another group, it always ends badly. So I want to share this. I'll probably do another video on this as well, talking about slavery on the global picture. But for that view of the USA, I think it's important to learn and not just have the information, you know, obfuscated, meaning that have it murkied so you don't know what's true and what's not true and get sucked into these different political groups or agendas or these demagogues that are just trying to make you angry or make you guilty because of what happened, you know, a century and a half ago. <laughs> but... Some more information to come and some more light to shed because I feel that we all need it, especially during these times. I like, comment. Yeah, leave a comment if you can, your thoughts on it. I thought a lot of this stuff was really cool and interesting to learn. A lot of it's just like common sense once you hear the information. But if you don't hear the information, it ain't common sense. All right, like, comment, subscribe, holla back.